Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to prepare for the Feast of Pentecost, we celebrate this Mass to ask God to make us worthy temples of the Holy Spirit. Today is also the first Friday of June. We consecrate ourselves to the heart of Jesus that is full of mercy and compassion for us. We also celebrate today the memorial of the Ugandan martyrs, St. Charles Luanga and companions. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass. Let us be sorry for our sins and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and life. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Please all stand. Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, after asking Peter three times, Do you love me? And after Peter replied three times, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said to Peter, When you were younger, you used to dress yourself, and you go where you want to go. But when you grow old, you will just stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you up, and you will be led to places where you do not want to go. You will be brought to places where you would rather not go. And the author of the gospel commented that Jesus said this in order to signify by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. My dear brothers and sisters, today, Jesus teaches us a unique definition of love. What is love? According to Jesus, love is being led where you do not want to go. Ang pag-ibig ay ang dalhin kung saan hindi mo gustong pumunta. This we see in our first reading today. Paul, who was undergoing trial in Caesarea, requested to be brought to Rome in order to face trial before the Caesar in Rome. 
And we all know what will happen to Paul in Rome. He will be imprisoned and eventually he will be persecuted. He will die in Rome. He may have wanted to go to Rome, but death would definitely be something that he would rather not go. But out of love for Jesus, Paul faced death. Because of love, Paul chose to go where naturally he would not go. Today, we celebrate the memorial of the Ugandan martyrs, St. Charles Luanga and his 21 other companions. They were the first converts to Christianity among the people of Uganda. And because of this, they gained the ire of the Ugandan king, who eventually had them killed. These martyrs also express their love for Jesus by embracing death, something that they would not naturally go to. My dear brothers and sisters, that is love as Jesus teaches us today. True love, according to Jesus, is not going where you want to go. True love, according to Jesus, is not doing what you want to do. True love, according to Jesus, is not being in control of everything, including other people's lives. True love for Jesus is letting go and allowing yourself to be guided by your beloved. True love, according to Jesus, is going beyond what is comfortable, what is convenient, and what is safe. True love, according to Jesus, is going beyond ourselves. It is reaching out. It is taking risks. It is abandoning ourselves. It is going out our way for others. Para kay Jesus, ang tunay na pag-ibig ay hindi yung gawin ko para sa iniibig ko ang gusto kong gawin para sa Kanya. Ang tunay na pagmamahal ay yung hayaan kong ako'y gabayan ng aking minamahal. Gagawin ko kahit yung mga bagay na hindi ko kayang gawin. Pupuntahan ko kahit yung mga lugar na hindi ko kayang puntahan. Gagawin ko dahil sa pag-ibig. That for Jesus is what love is because that is also how Jesus loves us. The past days, the priests of the Archdiocese of Manila, more than 100 priests among us here in the Archdiocese, went to Capis. That is the reason why we have not been celebrating Mass the past days. We were with Cardinal Advincula, our Archbishop, for our clergy fellowship. Something that we do annually before the pandemic. And that those days, these past days of our clergy fellowship, were the first time that we gathered again as a clergy since the beginning of the pandemic. Yung pong clergy fellowship ay ginagawa ng mga pari bilang pagsasama-sama sa isang informal occasion. Hindi misa, 
hindi uh, meeting, hindi formal na okasyon, kundi isang informal gathering to strengthen our bonds of brotherhood among ourselves and with our Archbishop, with Cardinal Advincula. And Cardinal Advincula brought us to Capiz, his home province. Alam ko po na marami sa inyo ang naghahanap sa amin. Naging hotline na po ang telepono ng Manila Cathedral sa katatawag ng marami sa inyo, kahit yung mga online viewers natin. At tinatanong, nasaan si na Father? Yung iba po, nagte-threaten pa. Ilabas nyo ang mga pare. Huwag nyong itago. Kaya po napauwi kami. Kasi baka magkagulo na dito sa Manila Cathedral sa paghahanap ninyo sa amin. May nagtatanong pa nga, nilipat na ba si na Father? May iba na ba silang assignment? Huwag po kayong mag-alala, dadating po tayo dyan. And when that time comes, we will formally inform you of our new assignments. For now, we are still here. We just had our clergy fellowship to go back to our normal lives as priests. Kung kayo po nag-a-outing din bilang pamilya, siguro naman po pwede rin kami mag-outing bilang mga pari. And you know, we had a good time together in Capiz. We visited many places, especially those places and municipalities associated with Cardinal Advincula. And everywhere we went, we experienced the hospitality and graciousness of the people, especially of the priests of Capiz. Kaya nagpapasalamat po kami sa kanila. At nakakatuwa po na kahit saan kami magpunta, may lalapit sa amin at sasabing, Father, online mass goer po kami sa inyo. Nakakatuwa na kahit saan, meron tayong connection because of our online masses. And you know, their preparations, the way they treated us, was exemplary. They went out of their way in order to make our stay there pleasant. That is love. Yung maabala, yung gumawa ng mga bagay na alam nilang ikakapagod nila, yung gawin ang mga bagay para sa mga pari, naramdaman namin ang kanilang pagmamahal para sa mga pari. And we wish to thank them, especially those who are joining this Mass today. My dear brothers and sisters, have you been brought to places where you would rather not go? Have you done things you would rather not do? Have you loved as Jesus loved? If you go to places where you want to go, and if you still do the things you want to do, you probably have not yet loved as Jesus loves. Please stand. Mindful that we are sent on the same mission as Peter's, we ask God the Father to strengthen our faith. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Father and those who exercise authority in the Church may be guided by the Holy Spirit let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples may be sensitive to each other's needs and find true happiness in their lives together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sinners may find hope and encouragement in the Lord's forgiveness of Peter. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. prayer, that the sick and those who are in distress may experience the Lord's presence amidst their sufferings and difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer, that our beloved dead may receive light, happiness, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We pray for the people who need our prayers and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to save the world through the work of your Church. May we be inspired by the example of Peter to labor for the spread of your kingdom on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Charles Luanga and his companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray. Make us, in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and in charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel and let us all together pray the Novena to the Holy Spirit. The theme of the eighth day is the fruits of the Holy Spirit. On this day, we pray for the conversion of those who have hardened, hardened hearts, hardened their hearts to the divine mercy of the sacred heart of Jesus and who not only reject religion but oppose it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. The fruits of the Spirit are perfections that the Holy Spirit forms in us as a pledge of eternal glory. The tradition of the Church lists twelve of them, charity, joy, 
peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. These fruits mark the lives of those who live by, by the Spirit. As St. Paul tells the Galatians when he writes, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's lead. The fruits of the Holy Spirit produce spiritual delight and fill with joy the hearts of those who belong to Christ. May the Holy Spirit fill us with the joy of living the gospel so that many others may be drawn to Christ and His Church as the fruit of the new Pentecost in our time. Let us all together pray. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, eternal love of the Father and the Son, kindly bestow on us the fruit of charity that we may be united to you by divine love, the fruit of joy, that we may be filled with the holy consolation, the fruit of peace, that we may enjoy tranquility of soul, and the fruit of goodness, that we may live the gospel without wavering. Divine Spirit, be pleased to infuse in us the spirit of generosity, that we may willingly meet our neighbor's needs, the fruit of kindness, that we may be benevolent toward all, the fruit of patience, that we may not be discouraged by delay, but may persevere in prayer and charity, the, the fruit of gentleness, that we may subdue every rising of ill temper, stifle every murmur, and overcome the sinful tendencies of our nature in all our dealings with our neighbor. Creator Spirit, graciously impart to us the fruit of faithfulness that we may rely with assured confidence on the Word of God, the fruit of modesty, that we may order our demeanor properly, and the fruits of self-control and chastity, that we may keep our bodies in such holiness as befits your temple, so that having by your assistance preserved our hearts pure on earth, we may merit in Jesus Christ, according to the words of the Gospel, to see God eternally in the glory of his kingdom. Amen. Mary, model of life in the Spirit. Pray for us. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.